Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. We are back on Madness MC and we, this is episode 3. Already up to episode 3, we're doing pretty well. I have quite a bit I want to do today, mostly just a lot more progress. That's probably what's going to be a lot of these first episodes anyway. However, there is one important thing I want to talk about first, and that has probably been one of the most popular questions, even though I've actually answered it in my 17 minute beta video. So, if you don't know, I'm in a private world at the moment, which is l the instant response everyone gets, including me, if, if I didn't know any better, would be that that's just overpowered and it's abusing owner, what the hell is he doing with his life, he should go jump in a ditch or something. The main reason was that in every single season of Team Factions, as soon as I would start building a base, I would get raided the very next episode and I'd have to rebuild from scratch and that's no fun to watch. It took way too much time to do and it's only because I get targeted so much and I like leave my cords and even if I don't show my cords, people always find me and it's just ridiculous. And so because of that, I can't build a base if I'm going to go solo. I sh a lot of people just said just go into a faction and that's what I'm going to do next season but I really want to do a proper solo season. The Nick, that's that's pretty much it actually, and I don't know why people are so annoyed at this idea because there are lots of people who have done this. The camping rusher and who is like one of the most popular faction players back in the day, he one of his original worlds he was in a private world and he did it for like quite a few of his seasons. So if if that's not enough to convince you then I don't know what is that's just my argument I really don't care anymore okay now that that is out the way so the next thing is we are going to be opening another crate key and probably what you're more interested in is who actually won it's only been 24 hours since I actually put the tweet up which is fine but I'm going to be announcing the winner now anyway and if you want to join for the next giveaway where I'll be giving another crate key uh, another flaring crate key away you just go on uh, go to the tweet that is on screen now it'll be linked in the description and reply with your favorite country and why and it's mo it's going to be the winner is going to be picked randomly and this time the winner was Traducio I have no idea what his I ING is or in-game name so if you are him please PM me on Twitter so you can tell me your IGN and I can give you the key so congratulations on winning if you're wondering what he wrote he put did you know that wolves are family with dogs and it's like I did but that's actually a pretty mildly interesting fact. You could stick that on Reddit. So anyway, I'm really hoping we get something valuable because I want to spend some money on getting obsidian. That would be nice. Uh, that's one... I think that is literally the worst thing you can get from it. Uh, which, so that's incredibly unlikely. But um, it's money. So let's just go slash sell hand. 43,000 for that key that is absolutely pathetic. But, oh well, it's still um, quite a bit of money. So, uh, I'm actually going to buy a spawner. Uh, oh, that's so annoying. Um, last episode, there were two spawners in here uh, that were being sold for 30k. I'm pretty sure even one of them was a spider spawner. That's actually not too bad, because they're 125 in shop. So, people are actually using this that no one, probably no one's going to buy that. No, no one's going to buy that. There are some ridiculous things, like that's actually not too bad of a price just because that's Silk Touch. But people are using this auction house seriously, which made me happy. So I might, if I had enough money, I would have brought that spawner and we could have actually worked on a spider farm today. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe I'll actually just get a bunch of sugar cane and try and buy that, but instead of actually working on the base at the moment. By the way, if you're wondering why I have slash sell hand when I'm just a regular player, it's because I'm going to be playing as a regular player so I don't get all the other kits because I want to make this as realistic as possible, apart from me being in my own private world. I'm just going to be playing with slash sell hand and the two major other commands are slash craft and slash e chest. Just because they're extremely handy and some things you can only get if you're a donor, but luckily the ranks are pretty cheap. Uh, also, one other thing is that if you are actually playing the server, there is a sale on at the moment, even though you probably don't care about it. I'm just reminding you because uh, this, I'm recording this on, a, well, this is like Friday night, but this will be coming out on Monday, and on Monday, this, that'll be the last day 
for the sale. So when you see this, it'll be the last day for the 20% sale. So if you do play on the server or plan on buying literally anything, um, I'm not going to force you. I'm just telling you that if you do want to buy anything, then this is the very last day to do it because sales won't be that frequent and there definitely won't be a big one, like a 20% one, for quite a while. So just just quick reminder. I wonder how much this is worth. Um, probably nowhere near enough. 5,000. We are 7,000 off. Okay, so while I wait for the sugar cane to regrow, I will just destroy it throughout, like, the next, I don't know, hour. Uh, so we can get enough money to actually start the spider farm because I feel like that will be a good way to make money so we can buy more stuff like obsidian. What I'm going to do now is because I really want to get this water curtain finished is that I'm going to actually mine out the outside of this down to... 60 and I'm going to make it probably six or seven wide and I'm just going to do the whole area The thing I'm just going to do right now though is just I'm just going to remove all the lakes because they are just an absolutely big pain to remove when you're trying to mine And I don't I'm not going to buy sponges because you can only buy them in pretty big stacks You know what actually this is too much of an annoying annoyance. I'm going to get some sponges yeah, they're 1000 for 16 so it's quite expensive when we're trying to save up every dollar. Uh, by the way, even though the server is 1.8, the sponges still work like the regular 1.7 sponges, and they also work on lava. So, fun fact. At some stage, I will be removing this entire river. Uh, so, I actually ended up clearing... I think I have fly on. Um, I actually ended up clearing pretty much this whole lake. Uh, pretty much. I'll end up clearing all of it anyway because again I'm clearing out all the land eventually and I don't know if I'll get all of this done just because it's a lot of mining but I'm gonna try so let's start another third person time lapse So I'm back. It's actually the next day. Uh, I've just spent two hours mining out this Well, like not fully mining out I've just got the dirt so far because I'm gonna have to move the beacon to get all of the actual stone And this has taken me over two hours. So that's just a little bit ridiculous But it's still quite a lot of work done and I've made a bit of money just from selling the random stuff that you can get from just MCMO with excavation and my level is now over 500 that's how much I have been shoveling the only thing that's made me sad is because it's the next day the sp spider spawner that was in here got sold so that's not good so I can't do that anymore so instead what I'm going to do for this episode I'm still going to look out for spawners in the auction house but I'm going to actually build a fully automatic pumpkin and melon farm inside the main base and I'll just leave this for a little bit and hopefully we can come back to it and I can get it done before the end of the episode. However, I'm running out of time because I have to get this video up by tomorrow and it's already 5 p.m. Just realizing how surprisingly long it takes to actually move a beacon and I've got to move this at least two more times because I'm going to be mining out the stone right now because it's been bugging me for nearly a week to get this water curtain done because that's when we started the series. So, it's what I'm going to do now. Uh, the other thing that's recently happened is that last week was the week where I had practice exams in New Zealand. They're just essentially what you have before you have your main exams. They're rather important, but they're not quite as important as the full ones. I had three of them, so I had like most of the week was studying. However, I spent most of it actually doing server. 
and tomorrow's back to regular school. However, I did do one interesting thing today, which was go to a car and airplane show off my grandma. I'm also really tired from it because I didn't get a great sleep and daylight savings happened today. So I had like five hours sleep, which compounded on my not so great sleep the night before. I just feel rather tired, so meh. But for the first time ever, I got to fly in essentially a charter flight, which is for 10 minutes, which is essentially just a really tiny plane. We have like a par par panoramic view of everything. It was really cool, and I should be doing a vlog on it shortly, even though I don't know how long it'll be. It's just, just something that was interesting and that I really enjoyed. Not to mention the car aspect with lots of Lambos, Ferraris, and a set of 10 Aston Martins. I've never seen such a collection of really expensive cars and I've been to more I've been to double digits worth of car shows. The range of this beacon seems to be non-existent. I think what I need to do is put it down further so it's below where I'm actually digging. Yeah I think that's the problem because this is at y equals 68. I'll put it as like y equals 60 if I can. This is so stupid I'm digging another hole so I can dig a hole faster. Maybe this isn't worth it. Don't you hate it when gravel falls on top of you when you're on a server? And it's raining. Still need to fix that in this world. But anyway, let's hope this beacon works. <laughs> nope. Apparently not. Do I need a clear line of sight or something? That's so stupid. Okay, I need someone to tell me how beacons work. I'm sorry, but I'm just completely sick of mining with that beacon not working. So, out of my frustration, I'm just going to work on something else, my way to cope. Uh, so, I'm going to start on a fully auto pumpkin and melon farm, and because a good chunk of this area is going to be for farms, I'm just trying to think of the best layout to do this. Because at some point, once we get rich enough, I'm going to have like endermen and creepers and that because they don't stack to die from like full damage. So I sort of want them on the top on one side, so probably like this. And because of that, I'm going to use like a whole... I don't... I'm still figuring out which type of farm I'm going to use for my fully automatic pumpkin and melon farm. But I'm probably going to use a whole floor, so I'm probably going to go down a wee bit. Uh, I don't know. I also keep forgetting I can fly in this, so I don't know why I'm using water. Again, just survival version of me. Uh, so this area here from the top to this block is 30 blocks, so that way it gives me plenty of space to chuck any uh, falling spawners in and anything else like that. So I'll stick other farms below here. However, I am now having second thoughts on the next farm I should do, because uh, I was looking at different melon and pumpkin farms and one of the most popular and efficient ones still requires quite a lot of hoppers. Because hoppers create a lot of lag, they are quite they are expensive on the server, so they are five thousand dollars per hopper hopper, so they are definitely one of the rare resources. So we have to be very concerned about them. So I'm probably I'm I'm thinking a cactus farm. I think I'll just do a cactus farm. But like a really big one. Okay, so this is y equals 150 and up there is y equals 180 so I think that should be plenty of space to make a pretty decently sized cactus farm and the reason I'm thinking of a cactus farm is that all the cactus can fall into like one general area and they can use water to flow around it uh, f my idea is just to have like the very bottom bit like as a flat water bed and then have above it uh, either like a cobblestone block and then sand on top of it or I can use the vine trick but it'll probably just be cheaper to do cobblestone. So let's try that. For now I'm just going to fill in the floors. Okay, actually because I want my base to look really good at the end and I'm going to put water on the bottom, uh, it is going to be very annoying to rip it up if I am going to build on there later on. So I think I'll just do like a relatively random pattern of green just as the floor uh, like a textured pattern see how that looks I am definitely a very bad builder some it's a skill I want to improve on so that's what I'm going to try 
apparently I can't type properly. I think my internet might be dying on me because my ping has just shot up to 600 before. I think it's getting better now though. Okay, I really feel like I have no idea what I am doing, but this seems to look not bad. That's about all I can say. My idea was to have a flat layer of clay like this and then put glass on top of it. Uh, no, actually, I think I'm just going to skip on the glass. That's also not very space efficient either. Uh, building is so hard. <laughs> the one thing I've learned in life is that f the things that look easy, uh, unless you can actually try and do them, you once you finally start doing them, you really get a next level appreciation for what they do. Mostly, like Minecraft builders. Sure, it may it may not sound great, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> I really couldn't. The one thing I wish they would add to the game is where you could instant mine cobble the same way you can instant mine stone. Just would be nice. Still have no real idea what I'm doing, but again, it's still not looking too bad, and if it's not looking too bad, then that's pretty good for me. Okay, I finished the floor. Again, like everything, takes longer than you'd think it would. <laughs> Who would have thought that trying to place blocks randomly would use so much cognitive effort and thought? Anyway, I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, I'm pretty certain if I start placing glass on top of it, it's going to just make it look worse. And I'm placing this even worsely random than I was before. I think I'm just going to leave it as the clay floor because it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm also thinking that I can make these walls green clay as well. Just I think that'll make a really nice atmosphere. But... Because I have all this glass already, what I could do is use it for, like, the trays of where the water goes into, because I'm still going to have to reroute all the water to a single hopper, and that's... I don't really want it to go below here, if that makes sense, because I want this to be the roof of the thing below it. I don't know, it's hard to explain. We'll just have to start building. I need to stop dying. By the way, your XP gets turned into an XP bottle when you die, so that's a plus. Boy, I'm um, just mining out this cobblestone because I wanted to put these up just up the wall slightly because it's, again, if, if I rebuild this wall later, it's going to be hard because with the water on the bottom floor, so I'll just do the side as well. It's really weird. It feels like I'm in a hotel, so somewhat, standing, looking down here. It's really cool. Okay, there we go. I also am going to have to figure out how I'm going to get light in here, but I've got a ton of sand a ton of cactus and I've purchased four hoppers for our collection system which will probably be below here. In fact I'll probably cut out like a side of this just so I can have a way to route all because there'll be a lot of spawner farms up there so I can just route it down the side if that makes sense. Okay just finishing up uh, we think I'll explain what I'm doing in just a second. So what I have here is a grid layout. There's 4x4 grid here, 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 and here. And they'll go somewhat to the center. And I've made a little wall around the edge because I'm going to have hoppers coming down pretty much from everywhere to an area somewhere below here. And they can go around the edges on here. I was originally going to have one edge, but I put two because I couldn't live with myself of this not being symmetrical. Just OCD on steroids. And I just made this an alternating pattern with the glass and that's where I'm going to be sticking the sand and then cactus on just to give you an example so this will go like this and then above that will be a slab then the once the cactus grows it breaks goes down into the water and then we'll go to it into a hopper system so so far looking pretty good okay so I'm still trying to figure out the best way of doing this because using water is very finicky so my idea Deer at the moment is to have all of the items fall into these areas here instead of going into one consecutive area and then below there they will go into a different water pool that will then go into a single hopper if that makes sense. Okay so just to keep it consistent when you're looking down if you're inside the farm I might have a glass thing somewhere I don't know but uh just gonna make this as the same clay thing. So the idea is that it'll be a water source. Uh, might as well just stick it there. There's nothing below that's really going to be a bother. 
uh, and then I'll just use cobblestone and then I'll have them all connect up but essentially once the I reach like the limit of the water what you can do is you can stick stick packed ice under it in an upside down half slab and it'll just keep going so that'll be nice the only thing that's going to hurt the efficiency of this is because it's such a long water loop chain is clear lag but we should be fine by the way here's what i mean with packed ice if i have it like this in fact uh because packed ice isn't that expensive i think i'm going to make this whole thing this may the the or well, where cobblestone is the whole part of this bottom bit actually all packed ice yeah i'm going to do that okay so far going good i am going to actually test it shortly uh, just to see if that accelerating thing actually works but last time I checked it did however I haven't really done it properly in game anyway we're going to be rerouting the items all the way to this left side so that way it's just easier in the future when we do other farms we can do it on other sides as well we don't have to do any super fancy rerouting if we start on the side I'm just thinking how can I connect this and the only way I can think of is if I have a water source here and then my upside down half slab here and just bring this along here that way hopefully the water doesn't interfere with this one because if I didn't have the slab here then it would just meet in the middle and we do not want that so should be fine okay I'm pretty much done uh, I am going to again test it however because I have this horrible packed ice here and I want it to look nice, I'm going to have the roof of the storage area for the, all the spawners one room below here. So this is going to be the roof area and then I will just have a slab to just throw away sand, okay, to represent like the roof because I can stick some chests here and blow it. So I want to actually stick the first hopper. Uh... The thing is, I can do hoppers that like route around here, so they go into each other and then they go down. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll stick a hopper facing this way first, and then I'll have, let's just say three chests for now, because I got four hoppers. I'll add some chests in a second. Oh my god, this water. So what should happen is once cactus goes down into here which I'll just chuck some in here now while I'm explaining it just in a bunch of different spots because I know I haven't used cactus down here yet so it should all be fine uh, in all four of them uh, and just hope it all comes well I can already tell that one just came there but what should happen is it should go through this filter system then come down here and be thrown into these hoppers and it looks like it is working really well and this keeps it really cheap because of how our hoppers are and it looks like all the cactus is coming through and that was really fast so clear lag should not be an issue so this is really good progress okay I'm running very short on time uh, sadly I left this a bit too last minute like I have recorded for like about eight hours but that's still not enough time honestly so next episode I will be spending I'll, I will try and spend a lot more time just on the server even if I'm not recording however uh, what I plan I just got want to get this this cactus farm to a working state so I'm just gonna fill in all of these to start with okay I have no clue whatsoever of what color I want to do for the slabs so I'm just going to try and take advice from you guys in the comment section whatever you think would be a good idea for now I'm just going to try jungle wood slabs I really don't know and if there's any way you think I can improve the look of this or like you have any ideas for my base I am all ears because I'm a noob at building however I'm very happy with how this is coming along by the way that's how the cactus farm works when they grow they snap off and then they go into the system uh, flying is super handy it makes this really really useful I'm just going to end the episode here it is nearly uh, there's no point building that any high it is nearly it's nearly 10 30 p.m. for me at night and I'm super sleep deprived at school tomorrow and I need to edit this video when I get home from school tomorrow if I want it to be up in time I have no idea how long this video is going to be but I'm quite happy with how this is going so far so if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe I don't care about <laughs> fun fact about YouTube um, the likes and dislike ratios don't actually affect the YouTube algorithms at all there we go 
they don't affect the YouTube algorithms at all. They, the only thing that determines the algorithm is watch time. So that's why most people don't care about likes and dislikes anymore. And that's from an engineering paper from YouTube. So fun fact. Anyway, don't forget, I now have a new schedule. So I will be continuing on with this cactus farm. So later in the week, actually four days from now, there will be another episode. So really, you should subscribe to that if you enjoyed this video. And you probably do if you've made it this far. So see you next time and goodbye from TNT Madness.